Kia ora bathi, no mai, hara mai, welcome to our place. So good to have you here and look at all these gorgeous ingredients. I feel healthier just by looking at them. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to everything we're going to learn today. What are we going to make? Okay, so first of all, we're going to do a really delicious stuffed kumara. Instead of adding cheese and egg though, we're gonna do a completely plant-based version. It's got heaps and heaps of flavor on the inside with chilies, garlic, and yeah, just tastes delicious. And we'll have crunchy seeds on the top to give it some texture. And then we're gonna serve that with a really simple salad. And then for dessert, we're gonna make a summer fruit tart, which is a really gorgeous uh, recreation of like a classic tart you'd get with the creamy inner and then lots of fresh fruit on the top. So, um, and again, we're not using any um, dairy or egg and no refined sugar as well. So the whole meal is really healthy, but also packed full of flavor. What are we gonna do first? First up, I think we should um, chop up the, the kumaras. Let's get into the big old kumara. So we're just gonna slice them in half and then we're going to get a baking tray okay and then we are going to just put a little bit of coconut oil into the tray normally with coconut oil it's uh, solid at room, temp room temperature mm. so often what I will do at home is actually pop that in the oven for you know while I'm heating up the oven okay. and then bring the pan out and because then we can just put a tablespoon of the coconut oil in and sort of shimmy it around and it will melt mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, we are on the umu. So while we're talking about the oven, I should put that on now. Yes, perfect. To what temperature? So 150 degrees. We're just going with a tablespoon of coconut oil in there. When would you put this on? Like, obviously, before the rest of the menu? You know, you can do these fast, faster by popping them in the microwave. So I, I have done that in the past. If yeah, I power it, yeah, me too. Yeah, um, but they taste amazing when you slow roast them. So 150 degrees for an hour really brings out the sweetness of the kumara. Uh, so either you can do that uh, sort of, you know, an hour and a half before you're serving dinner, or often what I'll do is bake them the day before. I think that our oil should be ready, yes. shouldn't it? And so we just want to shimmy that round to a swirl. Mm, the kakara. And we're already we've got that luscious smell there. And then we just put them in face down. Put the umu, put it back in the oven. kumara. So we've got the kumara in the oven, and now what are we up to? Okay, so now we're going to soak our cashews. Okay. So we are using a cup of cashews to make the creamy inside of the kumaras, and then we're also going to use one and a half cups of cashews for um, for our tart. What I normally do with cashews is soak them for two hours and then they go nice and soft and it just means it's easier on your blender. But again, if you're in a hurry, you can just do a hot soak. So we'll do that today. Okay. We put hot, hot water over the top and then, you know, you only really have to soak it for about half an hour. Okay. So once we've got that going, yes. how the hard the uh, We're going to do the base of our cheesecake. So in the base, I am going to use oats, so just plain rolled oats, uh, one and a quarter cups. A half a cup of walnuts, uh, one cup of dates, a tablespoon of coconut oil, and a big pinch of sea salt. And so while that is whizzing away, uh, you can go ahead and line your tart with cling film. Ooh, yeah, it's starting just, to do its thing. Yeah, it's starting to sort of group together. You want to keep blending it until it starts to, um, you know, you can grab a piece in your hand and it almost turns into a little bliss ball or muesli bar, because that's what's going to hold it together when we press it in the base. Mm. And what happens is when you start to use the food processor, the oils start to release from the walnuts, and then we've added a little bit of coconut oil as well to help it bind together. For that base, you can either use oats, often I'll use almonds or buckwheat as well. But oats is a really nice option because it's quite affordable and mm. also it makes the whole dish a little bit less energy dense than otherwise would be. Yeah, so it's all about the pinu pinu here, so you sort of mash it and push it into the sides. Yeah, yeah, and you want it really firm. So now that we've made the base nice and thick around the edges, we're just going to pop it in the freezer to firm up while we make the filling. Kapai. Kia hea te roa ki rote te pawakatio, and how long is it going to be in the freezer for? Just until we've made our filling, so oh. it's just for it to quickly firm up so that when we pour it in, it's, it's nice and firm. How ngā kaifakauru i nāini? So what are our ingredients now? Okay, so we're going to use the one and a half cups of cashews that we've soaked in the hot water. Uh, we're going to add half a cup of rice or almond milk, which has a really nice uh, mild flavour to it. Then we're going to add half a lemon, so I like to use the juice and the flesh as well. And then three tablespoons of coconut nectar. You could also use 
If you don't have coconut nectar, you could use maple syrup as an alternative. Um, we're going to have another big pinch of uh, sea salt. And then once we've blended all that together, we're going to add another half a cup of coconut oil and two tablespoons of cacao butter, and that's just to hold it together and make the cheesecake set. Papaya nene, is this good? With yeah, the that looks that looks beautiful. So what you want is, and you can do a little taste test if you like. Okay. If I must. Oh wow. Yeah. Mmm, yum. There's a little, yeah, quite cashewy mm. and creamy mm, mm. and delicious, but not too crazy rich. No, a little bit sweet, but not too sweet. And now we're going to grab our base from the freezer. Mm -hmm. You're right. I mean, just in that short time, it's nice, it's nice and firm. firm. And then we're just going to pour this in. And then what we're going to do is pop that back in the freezer. Uh, the kumara ready, maybe. Set this aside for a second just to cool down. We're going to start making our filling for the kumara. So we're going to grab our two leeks. We're just going to slice it. And how are you going to cook these? OK, so we're going to get a big frying pan. And we're going to pop this on sort of a medium to high heat. Add to our pan a tablespoon of coconut oil. And we'll just wait until that uh, heats up. Ready to bear? And if this looks like a lot of leeks, they do reduce down quite a lot. So while that's going, we're going to get some cloves of garlic. Mm -hmm. And then the while, we're going to use our cavolo nero. <laughs> this... what, what is that? I've never cavolo heard. nero. Cavolo is, nero. Yeah, which is the, actually the Italian name. So it's either called Tuscan kale mm -hmm. or cavolo nero in Italian. The stalks are a little bit a little bit wiry, so this is probably one um, instance where I'll take the stalks off. Um, and then I usually put mine in the compost and then I feel like, oh, well, I'm not wasting it, it's going back uh, in the garden. Okay. And while you're chopping those, and again, same with greens, once you cook them and add them to a recipe, they just disappear. So you can see the leeks are kind of starting to caramelise now and, mm. and really reduce down as well. Yeah. And now we're just adding in our cavolo nero or our Tuscan kale. And kale or all your greens don't take long to cook, so um, we'll just let that to sort of almost steam off. And while we're doing that, we can scoop out our kumaras. And we want to slice around the edge and just leave a border. So now we're going to make a, a, a sauce that goes with this. We're going to use our one cup of cashews. Uh, then we're going to add a cup of filtered water, four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And then the other ingredient is we're going to add a quarter cup of chickpea flour. We're going to add half uh, a chilli. If you're making these for kids, then you could skip the chilli. Uh, and then we're just going to have some sea salt again as well. The paper then, is that looking good perhaps? Yeah, that's perfect. So it's creamy, so it's like a creamy sauce. Mm. And we've got the chilli kick in there Ooh. as well. Warms the mouth. Yeah. OK, so we're going to um, just mash that kumara up and then pop that into our pan. That in, and do you want the sauce? And then the sauce. Yeah. yeah. So you're still cooking that? So a... Yeah, so we've still just got it on a low heat and all that's going to do is just keep it nice and warm and also let any bit of the sauce kind of evaporate slightly so, so our mixture is nice and firm and not too watery. So what we're going to do next is let everything to go back into the kumara. So we stuff them. Yep. We're going to sprinkle some seeds on top. So we've got a mixture of pumpkin, sunflower and sesame, and then pop them in the oven for 10 minutes at 180 degrees. And when we get to dessert, how do you serve that up? So we're going to take our tart out of the freezer. It'll be nice and firm. And then we're going to put whatever seasonal fruit that we've got at the moment. So I've got uh, strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, kiwi fruit, and a little bit of mango. That's a good portion. Yeah, for a lady. Oh, yum. Light and lovely, you can feel good about eating it. Mm -hmm. And you have plenty of room for coffee dough, for dessert. Yes. Cheers. Oh, wow. Mm. And that base is so yummy, and yet the majority of it is actually just rolled oats. And it's so creamy, mm. you need to try those textures. Mm. Yeah, a little bit of crunch in the base. I think you've really changed a lot of perceptions about whole food eating. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Stace.
can't let this go to waste. You know, know. you're not about waste. I know. <laughs>